Ron DeSantis and Nina Turner uh, are butting heads about critical race theory. Now, Ron DeSantis has made a decision in Florida in reference to AP African-American uh, courses in high schools in Florida. And Nina Turner is obviously against his decision. But before we get into all that jazz, let's start off by defining critical race theory, because there seems to be some misconceptions about what CRT actually is. So what exactly is critical race theory? Let's dive into this bad boy. Critical race theory, intellectual and social movement and loosely organized framework of legal analysis based on the premise that race is not a natural, biologically grounded feature of physically distinct subgroups of human beings, but a socially constructed category that is used to oppress and exploit people of color. Critical race theorists hold that racism is inherent in the law and legal institutions in the United States insofar as they function to create and maintain social, economic, and political inequalities between whites and non-whites, especially African Americans. Critical race theorists are generally dedicated to applying their understanding of this institutional and structural nature of racism to the concrete, if distant, goal of eliminating all race-based and other unjust hierarchies. CRT. But even though there's a lot of talk about CRT today, I do want you to understand that CRT is not new. It's just more popular now. CRT actually started during the 1980s. And I want to point uh, your attention here to a couple of individuals. This is Dr. Uh, Kimberly Crenshaw. This is Kendall Thomas. And this is Patricia uh, Williams. I actually had to do, uh, for a job interview, if you believe it or not, I had to do a complete... Uh, presentation about Kimberly Crenshaw and uh, critical race theory and intersection. I had to do a whole, that was part of the interview. <laughs> Just the interview, one part of it. Now, let's get to this piece here because this is the piece that I want people to see. Critical race theory was a movement that initially started at Harvard under Professor Derek Bell in the 1980s. So again, it's not new. You just hear about it more now because it's more popular. So if you notice, you didn't hear as many people complaining about it back then. It goes on to say it evolved in reaction to critical legal studies, which came about in the 70s and dissected the idea that law was just and neutral. Over time, the movement grew among legal scholars, mostly of color, at law schools across the country, including at UCLA, where Crenshaw lectured on critical race theory, civil rights, and constitutional law, and later at Columbia, where she was appointed as a full professor in 1995, alongside Williams, a former student, research assistant, and lifelong mentee of Bell's, and who is now professor of law emerita. Just a little bit of background there. Now let's get into this issue here with Ron DeSantis. So, oh dear, 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 dear. I think I'm just hopping to the video. I'll hop to the title first. So this is what has happened in Florida. DeSantis defends banning African-American studies course as black leaders call for action. So I, I wanna point out this article here and Eric, please put the link to this article to people in the chat so they can see it. Um, just to give you an idea, a quick idea of what's happening. Governor Ron DeSantis on Monday stood by Florida's decision to reject student access to an AP course on African-American studies as outrage mounts surrounding the move, particularly among black leaders. The Republican governor said that he supports banning the course being offered to some high school students because it lessens devolve, or excuse me, its lessons delve too far into political agendas, 
broaching topics such as queer studies and abolishing prisons. Black officials in the state, from Democratic lawmakers to faith leaders, however, are seeking to overturn DeSantis administration's determination that the class significantly lacks educational value. So this is the argument that he's trying to make, that it lacks educational value and that it has a political agenda attached to it, talking about things as a uh, queer agenda and also abolishing prisons. That is the argument that he's making for preventing this from moving forward. Now, yet during a press conference Monday, DeSantis showed no signs of reversing the decision to bar the course in Florida. The college board, the organization responsible for administering standardized tests like the SATs, had spent a decade developing African-American studies, AP course, and is offering it to more than 60 schools in the country as a pilot program. So I want to show this clip here, and we're going to get to the Nina Turner part as well, because someone did ask this question to uh, Ron DeSantis recently, and I want you to hear uh, his statement on this as well. But let's talk about AP courses for just a second here, just for people who are not aware. I took AP courses in high school. AP courses are not required. It's an option. So the way it worked is that you had your regular English. So if you are, let's go with uh, junior. If you were a junior in high school, there was an option to take the, the English course for your junior year or you could take honors English or you could take AP English. I took AP English. It was an option. I have to say that for people who have never had any experience with this. So to me, it just kind of seemed like whether he agrees with the political ideology of the course it's not like students are being required to take it. And there are courses that you are required to take. It's an option. So if students want to take the course, I feel like they should be able to take the course. If students don't want to take the course, I feel like they shouldn't be forced to take the course. So my whole thing is, is that if you feel as though this course is going to make certain groups of people feel bad about their self and their history in this country, then they don't have to take the course, Ron. This is how I feel about it. I don't understand why this was made to be such a big deal. Just leave it be. Just leave it be. You know, there's so many other things to be focusing on right now instead of focusing on this course, which is optional. Now, he did respond to this. Let's listen to what he had to say. Okay. The African-American studies course that was rejected by the state been a lot of criticism of that move, uh, people saying, you know, this is exactly what we were fearing with the individual freedom bill. I don't know if you or the commissioner could maybe expand a little bit more about. Sure. I mean, I think so, um, you know, as you know, uh, in the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history, all the important things. That's part of our core curriculum. This was a separate course on top of that for advanced placement credit. And the issue is. we Pause. Let's talk about the black history piece for a second. If you have not attended a black school, chances are the only time that you learn about black history is in February during black history month. Chances are, and that's not enough time to go in depth. It really isn't, but you learn about European history all through high school all through middle school. This is part of the problem. And, and I've said this before, like black history should be taught throughout the whole year, along with all the other history that you learn. <clears throat> so to limit it, unless there is a chapter on slavery, unless you hit that part of the history book where you're talking about slavery, unless you hit that part of the history book where you're now talking about the civil rights movement, for the most part, a lot of times in some of these schools, it's not even, it's not even 
touched on in a way that is actually meaningful. It doesn't go far enough. It doesn't go deep enough. I can talk to people that I know that grew up in Maine where they told me it's in Maine, it's not even required. So this is a part of the problem. This is, a, this is one piece I think I do where I do agree with Morgan Freeman on when he said, why is it a separate thing? Why is not just taught with all the rest of the other history instead of trying to condone it to just one mom? So that's part of the problem. Let's go on. Let's go back because he was starting here. Sure. I mean, I think so. Um, you know, as you know, uh, in the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history, all the important things that's part of our core curriculum. This was a separate course on top of that for advanced placement credit. And the issue is we have guidelines and standards in Florida. Uh, we want education, not indoctrination. If you fall on the side of indoctrination, we're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do this. So then how was the course even able to pass? The, if it doesn't meet the requirements, how was the course? How was the course able to be designed in the first place? Do you see what I'm saying? Because when you create a course, and I know this, having worked with uh, faculty on this as well, when you create a course, there are certain requirements that that course has to meet. So how was the course approved in, in the first place? They said it took them 10 years, 10 years to create this course. Hmm. We're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do this course. So when I heard it didn't meet the standards, I figured, yeah, they may be doing security. It's way more than that. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. And so we're on, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. We believe in teaching kids uh, facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them. When you try to use black history to shoehorn in queer theory, uh, you are clearly trying to use that uh, for political purposes. Yes. Um, political purposes and agenda. The education system as a whole, at least the public education system, based on what I've experienced, has always kind of had some agenda to it. I'm just going to be real. I'm sorry. But they don't even tell you the true history. They don't. Let's keep it real here. If he wants to talk about some type of agenda, the history that you learn when you're in public schools, the stories in your history textbook, that is not, number one, the whole story. And some of it isn't even true. They don't go that far. They don't go that deep. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. In history class, they don't teach you the truth about Martin Luther King. Does your history textbooks in the public school system, does it tell you that Dr. King was anti-capitalist? Does it tell you that Dr. King was calling for reparations before he was killed? Don't tell you those things, does it? Does it tell you how the FBI was after him okay? What does it tell you about the Black Panthers? It tells you they were a militant group. This is what it said in my history point. The Black Panthers were a militant group. Does it tell you that they were feeding and clothing people? That they were doing mutual aid? That they were building clinics? So the whole curriculum has an agenda if we want to be real. Standardized test. I go into it too because we're about to dive into it tonight. Standardized test. You don't think that has an agenda? The curriculum, the curriculum, which is approved by the school board, has an agenda. There are certain things that they put in and there are certain things that they keep out. Even when it comes to literature, for those who are English teachers, there are certain books that you're supposed to teach 
that are part of the curriculum. And then there are certain books that should never hit that classroom. So it all has an agenda. It's just whether or not it's the agenda you actually want to hear. So of course, CNN had this conversation with Nina Turner. I want you to hear this statement from her here. Now, shout out to Case Study QB because he clipped this. Case is always doing the thing. This is part one. So we're going to pay. We're going to pay. We're going to play part one first. And then we're going to dive into part two. But let's get started with part one. Here we go. Okay. Missouri wants to ban critical race theory in schools, even though this is an important part, they want to ban it in schools and teachers say it's actually not taught in grade schools. So I wonder why do you think it is that governors and legislators are moving in this way and pushing back against what they are calling a woke curriculum? Well, it's a dog whistle because it's not taught in K through 12 educational classrooms. We know that critical race theory is primarily taught in law school and it is a way to look at the con the legal constructs of this country that race is a social construct and that social construct is not just about individual biases or prejudices that the whole notion of racism is weaved into that and we know that professor kimberly crenshaw and some others came up with that and primarily taught in law school so they they it's a dog whistle and they are talking to it just boggles my mind it seems like conservatives always want to make a false equivalency and they're goal really is they need to come on and tell the truth. Their goal is to erase or diminish the history of black people and other marginalized populations. Instead, we should be educating, enlightening people, empower people. Let's talk about the structural imbalances in this country and then do something about them. But to say that you don't want these types of curriculum taught in school tells me that you don't want our children to know the truth about America's history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it is a, an affront to the black community in particular and other marginalized communities in general. So I just want to add in here something really quick. First and foremost, don't forget to hit the like button. I don't think I've said that tonight. <laughs> so don't forget to smash that like button, guys. But one thing I want to add in, I think it's important, and, and Nina didn't, she mentioned uh, how conservatives feel about CRT, but I'm going to tell you guys a little secret for those of you who don't live here uh, in Massachusetts. Guess what? Some of the liberals don't want you to teach it either. Just something that you should know. Some of the Democrats, they don't want to talk about it either. They don't want to deal with it. I want to bring you in here because you and I um, really bonded in some respects over distance learning during the pandemic and how much more we became involved in our kids' curriculum as all parents did really and thought, oh, now I'm really, really paying attention, especially at the grade school level. It's true. It's not taught at the grade school level. But what Nina is talking about in particular and also with the topics from the AP course, for example, just a little bit intersectionality and activism is part of it. Black Queer Studies was part of it, Movement for Black Lives, Black Feminist Literary Thought, the Reparations Movement, Black Study and Black Struggle in the 21st Century. These are some of the topics from the AP course in African American Studies that Governor Sanders does not want to be taught in the schools. Do you agree with Nina in the sense that this is um, a dog whistle and an attempt to erase or whitewash, whitewash history? I'm sorry, but I think this is what it's really about. You see this piece right here? Let me make sure I put this back up here. Sorry. You see this item right here, the reparations movement? I think this is what they don't really want you to learn about. Now, we can go through all these intersectionality and activism, Black queer studies, movement for Black lives, Black feminist literary thought, the reparations movement, Black study, and Black struggle in the 21st century. Out of all these items listed here, I think the one that they don't really want you to hear about is the reparations movement. I think that's what they don't want you to talk about in the classroom. But let me go back to this piece here. But it was interesting that Nina uh, started her answer by saying, well, this, no one's even talking about this. And then she ended her answer by saying, we should be talking about it. We should be teaching it. Everyone should learn it in school. And so that's where they're headed. Look, I think this is very simple. There are a lot of parents out there who don't want their children taught that because they are white, that they are inherently evil, that they've done something wrong, that they have, uh, you know, uh, oppressed anyone 
that's the that's the issue. That's what parents believe has been happening in some of these classes. It's then don't take the course. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like again, it's a AP course. It is optional. You do not have to take it. And and I'm gonna be real. Look, I'm about to go old school on you guys. When I was in middle school, they showed us parts of Roots. <laughs> The miniseries Roots, Alec Haley Roots. I don't think they'll show that to kids today. Some of us grew up, some of you, some of us millennials, we grew up with some harsh truths. So they showed us certain parts of the movie Roots, certain parts of the movie The Colored Purple. So if they're complaining about this, that's why I'm saying, like, I don't know. Like, I don't even know because we, we saw some things that I know they would never let kids see in school today. I mean, it's just this whole idea that, well, people don't want to be made to feel guilty, but you can still feel guilty when they're talking about slavery or they're talking about the civil rights movement in history class, which those are part of the history textbooks. So what are you going to do if someone says they feel guilty about that? Then all of a sudden it's like, we're not going to talk about slavery anymore. We're not going to teach the civil rights movement anymore because some people feel it makes them feel guilty. How far are we going to take this and pay close attention? Because this is what I've been trying to warn people about to pay attention to local politics so many people focused on who's going to run in 2024. Is Joe Biden going to run again? And da 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 da. Focus so much on the national level. And meanwhile, on the local level, you have governors and you have mayors that have actually been imposing harmful laws to their constituents. And m most people don't even know about it unless it makes national news. I'm sorry, but people don't pay, people are not paying attention to what's happening with their local politics. And you need to pay attention because it turns out who you vote for, for governor, that actually matters. You know, that's not law school theories. It's just the idea that you would teach one group of children that they are inherently bad or that our country and the way it was founded and by uh, the people that founded it is inherently rotten at its core. That's what uh, conservative parents are worried about. That's the core of these uh, uh, legislative activities in these states. And uh, and I think that's what DeSantis is getting at. That's what they're getting at in Missouri and, and a whole bunch of states out there. You know, there yeah, is, I want to bring you back on that because the idea of belief is harking back in that conversation of what people believe is happening and the idea of almost building off of the assumptions of what it actually means. And I would uh, I suggest here, there's also the notion of in, as the counter argument, they want to have a bill to, in lieu of critical race theory, which is not being taught in schools, um, in grade schools, they want to have teacher training on patriotism instead, as if it's really an either or scenario. What's your reaction? And, and it's, it's not an either or. So let me get back with Scott, since he want to go there. For years, for decades, for generations in this country, black children have had to carry inferiority on their backs, in their minds, in their hearts. This country, going back to what John said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the bad and the ugly. Chattel slavery was bad and ugly. And to be able to teach African-American history in a holistic way, which is America's history, this country has some good, it has some bad, and it has some ugly. And anybody that would fix their mouth, to quote my grandmother, to say that chattel slavery was okay, that the enslavement of black people was okay, that, that having separate but unequal was okay, then there is something wrong with them. Number two, Scott, Critical race theory is taught in law school. It is not taught in K through 12. However, the point that I was making was about the teaching of African American history itself, which is America history. And to teach that history, you have to teach the whole of it. You can't just teach one part of it. So it's not j about making white children feel inferior. This is about teaching history in the broadest way so that people can gain a deeper understanding. And hopefully through that understanding, things can change. I don't see Governor DeSantis doing away with AP European history or AP world history. I wonder why that is. Governor DeSantis needs to focus on governing the state and stay out of education and let the educators educate. So here's the list. 
AP European history, AP art history, AP Japanese language and culture, AP German language and culture, AP Italian language and culture, AP Spanish language and culture, culture, are AP classes currently offered? It's crazy how AP African American studies made the chopping block in Florida. So see, this is the hypocrisy that is being brought up that Nina's bringing up here. So everybody needs to see this. So pay close attention to that. Why kick off the AP African American class, but you can leave the other ones there, right? So just that's something you need to pay attention to. Let's go on. So Scott, if you and other white people got a problem with the whole of American history being taught, then you're the ones that have a problem. This ain't about making anybody feel in fear, but Brown v. Board, Board of Education was just that, about how generations of black children have been made to feel inferior in these United States of America. And it Scott, was let, founded let me get, on let's, racism Let's get and Scott bigotry. back in here. Let's get Scott back here. I want you to respond. What is your reaction, Scott? Yeah, well, Nina, you ought to be very happy with Governor DeSantis because not only is African American history under Florida law required to be taught to school children, it has actually been expanded during his governorship. This particular class they don't like because of some of the curriculum points they think is in conflict with Florida law, but it is an absolute state requirement in Florida that they teach African American history and it's gotten uh, more expansive since he came in. So you sound upset with me, but the fact the way is, he uh, wants Governor to talk, DeSantis, though, Scott, right? I mean, you, you say, you say, the way he wants you to say, talk. no, he's not writing the, the party curriculum. Of free he's not writing the curriculum. Excuse me. Speech. Uh, excuse me. Yes. He, no he, one can so here's something I just want to point out here, you guys. They've said multiple times it's not taught in K through 12, but the whole argument here is over it being taught in K through 12. Just something that I want to point out. Again, AP courses are not required. It is a choice. It's an option. If you don't want to take the class, you don't have to take the class. If you want to take the class, you have the option to take it. And I think for me, it's just, let's go on. No, he's wait, not, no, he's wait, not writing wait, the wait, curriculum. Excuse me, excuse I'm just me. telling you the facts. Uh, hello, television 101. No one can hear you when you talk over each other. So let's just go back to, I want to hear your response, Scott, and I'll allow you to speak. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'll just wrap up and say, you know, the governor of the state is not writing the curriculum. I'm just telling you the facts. School children learn African American history in Florida, and it's gotten more expansive on his watch. So you say you want it taught. It is being taught. I think you're upset about this class, but holistically speaking, they're getting a really good education in Florida about African American history in the United States. John, I'm not upset about this class, Scott. I'm, I'm, a, I'm upset with the fact that you said that white children are somehow going to feel inferior if all of African American history is taught. So I wanted to have this conversation with you about inferiority and who has that, been made that's to feel, absolutely, be, that's uh, a, that, feel inferior that, that's, in the that United States. That is absolutely 100%. That, that is absolutely 100% not what I said. I said that parents are concerned. Let's roll the tape, baby. That children you are walking into classrooms. We can roll the tape. That, Excuse no, I didn't me. say that. Nina, no, no, I, I did like it. Hold I on. I did, I did not. Okay, uh, the talking over each other, I don't like. So I'm moving on to the, the second part because when they start talking over each other, it's hard to hear who's saying what. So part two, because they do finish this conversation here. Put this here. All right, let's pick up from here. Missouri wants to ban critical race theory in schools. Even though this is an important part, they want to ban it in schools and teachers say it's actually not taught in grade schools. So I wonder, why do you think? Wait a minute. Why is this the same? Should be a second part here. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Whoopsies. Here we go. Back now with Nina Turner, Scott Jennings, and John Avalon, who also has an opinion piece on CNN.com saying the word police are doing more harm than good. We're going to come back to that point in just a moment, but I do want Scott to have a chance to respond. I know that you had a statement you wanted to make as well. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to Nina. I, I absolutely, <laughs> under no circumstances, said that children uh, should be taught that slavery didn't happen or that it was somehow good or, or whatever it is you attributed to me. In fact, I don't think there's a school in America that isn't teaching about the United States of America, how it's founded, what happened, the wars we fought, how we atoned for it. 
They don't teach the whole the whole story, though, dude. They don't teach the whole story. And it, that's all of the history that is taught in this. They don't teach the whole story. Listen, people were still teaching that Christopher Columbus discovered America. People were still teaching that. So they don't teach a whole, even when they teach you about the pilgrims. And yeah, they, they broke bread with, with indigenous people. And that's how we got Thanksgiving. They don't tell you about everything that happened before that. They don't tell you about how they slaughtered the indigenous people. They don't tell you about that part. Even when we talk about slavery, they whitewash slavery. They don't tell you if you knew the truth, you would be appalled. They don't tell you what they did to the women, what they did to the men. I, some things I can't say on here what they did to the children. They don't tell you the full true story. That's the thing about history in this country. It's just not, it's whitewashed. <laughs> Let's put it that way. They put it in a way so that it's easier to digest. Progress we've made. I think that's being taught in probably every school in America where parents really have an issue. And you can talk to a lot of parents about it is if teachers are telling one group of students, this is somehow your fault. You're, you're somehow inferior or you're somehow bad, or you somehow caused harm or pain to this other child. These are very sensitive topics. And to be talking to students at an extremely young age about that, I mean, I think it sounds like college debates to me, but to be talking to, to school age kids about that, that's what has parents concerned. And it's why you see these legislators uh, dealing with it at, at the state level. Yeah, But you can't protect. So this is the thing. It's just, I don't... It's like parents today, and not all of them, but there seems to be this recurring theme with par with parents today, where it's like they they want to protect the kids from everything. Like I don't want my kid to feel bad. I don't want my kid to have to deal with obstacles. So I'm gonna be a lawnmower parent. And I'm gonna mow those obstacles out of their way. I don't want my kid to have to encounter challenges. Like some of the things that I've heard from the parents, I'm just like. You can't parent your child the whole life. You can't. When your child eventually becomes an adult, they're going to have to deal with challenges. They're going to have to deal with, you know, obstacles. These kids are going to have to deal with the fact that someone is going to say something to them one day and it's going to make them feel bad. I just, nowadays, it's just, you can't say anything anymore. You can't, you know, certain things you can't watch. Everything is just so tone policed and it, it drives me crazy. We can talk about that on call in tonight too. It's so extreme now. I'm sorry, but I'm a millennial and we said a lot of things <laughs> and we did a lot of things that you can't even say today. Ay, ay, ay. Interestingly enough, and I, um, John, I want to bring you in here as well. And Nina, interestingly enough, you know, I don't know of a lesson that actually does this, that precise mo notion where they are telling and sing singling out students to say, you are the problem, you are bad. I mean, there's a Taylor Swift song of, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. They might be citing that lyric, but that's not what's happening in many, court in many classrooms. But John, on this, on this point, why is this perception not held when we learn, say, about um, the suffrage movement and women voting? I, I rarely hear an argument that someone makes about men collectively as a gender feeling as though they're alienated and targeted when we talk about women's rights in this country. Why do you think the element of race, John, inserts a very different dynamic and nuance that has conversations like this? She actually kind of answered her own question, maybe not realizing that she was answering that question when she brings up the women's suffrage movement and she says, why doesn't that make like men feel guilty the same way it does when you bring up like the concept of race? Well, you have to remember who was a part of the women's suffrage movement. The women's suffrage movement was white women. It was not black women. So when she mentions the race element, that's why I said she kind of answered her own question in a way. When she mentions the racial element, the women's suffrage movement is still centered in the white community. That was white women that did that movement. When you're talking about something like slavery, you're talking about like civil rights, this is different. This is different. 
So I think we have to keep that in mind because I've seen people make that comparison before about the women's suffrage movement. That was a, a movement for with white women. So even when you think about the, the racial aspect, it was still something that was a part of European culture because that was something that white people did that was good. Not something that white people did that was bad. We're going to move on to Nina. Oh, no, let me let him say what he's going to say. Then I'll move on to what she said. Well, Laura, that's because the original sin of slavery uh, is, is a stain that spreads through American history. And you can't understand American history or American political history without dealing with race. It's a fundamental fault line. And it's not just Brown v. Board. I mean, up until, you know, the mid 60s, there were, you know, a lot of schools that, that whitewashed uh, slavery uh, and, and, and didn't want to deal with the civil rights movement. Now we've got a, a more integrated understanding of American history being taught. Some folks that makes folks feel uncomfortable. Some folks on the left would reduce it to identity politics tropes that, um, you know, take take it too far. And by the way, I do think we should be teaching civics education. And I don't think there's anything remotely right wing about that. We need to return to liberal values and, and and a sense of shared civics. I like I grew up thinking that everybody had to take civics. Like I had to take civics. It was required at my high school. You had to take it your freshman year. And then as I got older, like when I went to college, I realized. My friends didn't have to take civics, so I had to take it. We had like mock debates and everything, like when I was in high school. Granted, I was part of the debate team, but in my civics class, we had a mock debate. There were some of us in the class that were a part of the jury. There was the defense, there was the prosecutor. Like, so we had like the whole, I remember that was like really fun. I remember that thinking back on that, but it did hit me when I went to college that not everyone was required to take civics. And so, I think that explains a lot of things as to why some people just don't understand how the government works in this country. Um, but it's when the extremes hijack these debates and run roughshod over any liberal uh, liberal values or, or, or allegations of free speech that things start getting balkanized again. And you have to understand it in the context of American history. So when there is this 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 intense pushback on the teaching of a more integrated view of American history, you gotta understand it in the context of American history. And that's why folks should be right to say, hold on, you're, you're, you're resurrecting some ugly old ghosts that we saw play out at different periods in American history. We need to understand those history in order to transcend it ultimately. You know, you have a piece on CNN.com to that to the point about the idea of, of white. Let's get to the uh, piece here that uh, Nina says, so this is also the, I don't want to get into the, again, the Latinx thing. It's it's like I said, it's like, I thought there was one more thing that um, Nina said here. I could be wrong. Okay, let's do that part. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's just, um, you don't know what to say these days. Here we go. I mean, there's some false equivalencies here, but as far as Governor Huckabee is concerned, Arkansas is one of the poorest states, one of the worst states when it comes to childhood poverty rates. And Governor Huckabee needs to be worried about poverty in her state and let the English teachers worry about vocabulary and get to work doing the things that the people of that state elected her to do. Lastly, Laura, I just cannot sit here and allow Scott to get away with what he just said. Malcolm X, I clearly remember in reading the autobiography of Malcolm X when he talked about being in class and his white male teacher asked everybody in the classroom, Malcolm X was the only black person in that classroom, this ain't ancient history, asked them what they wanted to be when they grew up. And when he told his teacher he wanted to be a lawyer, his teacher told him to be realistic about being a N-word in America. So do not sit here and act like America has totally atoned because it has not totally atoned for its original sin. And why can't we just have that conversation? As far as the word police, I agree. A lot of these people have too much time on their hands worrying about that kind of stuff. That's not where it is. How do we help people live better and, and richer, more enriched lives? That should be the major point here. Scott. I'm gonna go ahead and end it there because for sake of time, because I still, um, I wanna make sure I start calling at a decent amount of time. I went over time a little bit. Um, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, Colin said, you watch Roots at school. My dad maybe watched Roots when I was 10 at home. Yes, we didn't watch the entire miniseries at school, but there were certain parts of it that my teacher did show us at school. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I don't think teachers could get away with that today. I'm just saying. Things are a little bit um, different. 